how did we get here? Asked Mr. Verhofstadt, opening the debate. There was a referendum in 1975 which went in favour of continued membership. There was no continuity leave campaign after that. People accepted the result with good grace. They didn't seek to overturn it. Indeed, Euroscepticism was confined to the fringes of the Benite left. What changed, frankly, was the Maastricht Treaty. Up until that moment, it was still possible to see the EU as a club of nations as an association of states primarily concerned with trade and economics, but after Maastricht it became clear that EU jurisdiction was being extended into a whole series of completely uneconomic fields, foreign policy, culture, uh, migration, citizens' rights, etc., etc., and that the aspiration was to have the EU as a quasi-state with a flag and a parliament and a currency and a president and external embassies and all the other accoutrements. If at any stage Britain had been able to have a trade-only association, of course that would have been enough. In fact, even as recently as February 2016, if David Cameron had come back with any repatriation of power, can we doubt that he would have won the ensuing referendum? But faced with the departure of its second financial contributor, the EU was still not prepared to allow any devolution of power, and that ultimately is what made a parting of ways inevitable. So I wish you all the best. Uh, I want to return to the kind of vision that Churchill set out where he said, let's have a, a united Europe with Britain looking on as a friend and sponsor. You are losing a bad tenant, but gaining a good neighbour. Vous allez perdre un mauvais locateur, vous allez gagner, gagner un bon voisin.